Hello friends, if you're new here, welcome, I'm Anna, and this channel is about everything related to art and crafting. And if you're back, I'm so glad to have your company again. Today we are having a craft vlog or podcast if you want. I will show you my finished and not so finished projects, both sewn and yarn ones, and I will share some plans, then will tell you about my handmade market experience as a visitor yet and then for dessert i will show you a few yet very striking projects from dear subscribers i hope you will enjoy our time together so get cozy and we'll begin i want to begin with her my precious darling, my first linen tea that I made myself. This is a free pattern from Fabric Store. I will leave the link in the description section if you're interested. It's a very, very simple and easy project for beginners and it helped me feel like I'm gaining my sewing confidence back. Yeah, this is it. I will, I will show you how it looks on me. So this is the opening, this is the back. It was a very interesting and fun project to make and although the instructions say that it takes two to three hours to sew this, for me it took more than six hours. So basically I spent a whole Sunday making this tea, but it was totally worth it. The instructions for sewing this, so the website provides both the pattern that can be printed at home or in any print shop of your choice, and it also provides very detailed instructions that were so helpful, because uh, for me, like, the most scary thing was the uh, bias tape here, and I think I made it pretty well. But um, I was kind of struggling with finishing the ends inside, finishing the seams, because I don't have a serger. So I was playing around the zigzag uh, using my new machine that you can see here. And in the end, I did kind of double zigzag finishing, but it could be better, I think. And next time, if I ever decide to repeat this, which I might, of course, because it's such a versatile and very basic tea that can be made in different colors. I don't know. Uh, I will tell you more about that later. So I think next time that I make it, I will use French seams that look super neat and kind of luxurious, <laughs> maybe. I don't know. The fit of this tea is very oversized and from the pattern I used size 4 slash 6 but I increased the length. Uh, I increased it maybe by a couple of inches more because it is very cropped. I mean like very cropped. So if you decide to make it, just be aware and maybe you want to increase it as well. And also the, um, the neckline is pretty tight, but I actually like it. I like my tees to be like very tight on the neck. I don't like very loose ones. So it worked for me totally. But if you don't like that, you can easily widen the neckline because it's, it's very easy to do with the pattern as it's a super basic one. For this project, I initially bought one meter or one yard. I don't know, I think they are very similar of a linen fabric and I still have some left for some small projects. I don't know, maybe a bandana or something else. I haven't thought about it. And while I was making it and after, it occurred to me that this pattern can be easily turned into a dress. It's just increasing length and adding maybe some side slits. Or it can be even uh, be made into a smoke dress. So I think it's a very, very great foundation for experiments. Yeah, so overall, I recommend this pattern, especially if you are a beginner like me and if you are afraid of sewing, because I'm so afraid as, you know, when you cut the fabric and you begin sewing, it's very 
hard not it's very hard it's like harder to fix some mistakes than it's for example with yarn projects but it's totally worth it and i'm looking forward to wearing it so much and it goes well with almost everything that i have in my wardrobe As for finished yarn projects, I have two pairs of socks that I've knitted and they were a success. So I've knitted these ones first. These ones are mine. They are already blocked. I will show you. I intentionally made them asymmetrical. <laughs> yeah, as you see, just to make them more or less interesting. So I used regular sock yarn by Regia. It's four-ply yarn, sock yarn. I used my 2.5 millimeter DPNs and I was afraid to use them, as I told you in my previous craft vlog, because I thought I would need to lose. But in the end, it turned out perfect. And it was one of the most enjoyable and restful uh, knitting process that I've ever had in my life. I think I will need more and more and more socks because, yeah, they're just fantastic. And th they're very basic socks. I don't even have a name for them because they are like elementary. I use the simplest elements like a uh, two by two rib and just regular stockinette stitch, regular heel, so everything is super, super regular, but it worked. I just decided not to go crazy with some fancy elements, just to start from the most basic pattern and it worked. And these ones I needed for Brian, I haven't blocked them yet. So they, of course, they're much bigger. The only difference from mine is the rib. I made one by one rib for him. And of course, but they are bigger. <laughs> yeah, so I will show you the yarn that I used. It's here. I still have some leftover. So it's this very pretty beige color. And this one's I really love uh, working with this uh, self-patterning, self-striping yarn, I don't know how to call it, uh, as it makes the process very exciting. You don't know what you will get. And as I have enough of this yarn, I think I will make uh, socks for myself soon and I will add one fancy element. Maybe I will add some ruffles, yeah, just to make them kind of cute and playful in a way. And for Brian, it's the first hand knitted pair of socks in his life and he's very thrilled to wear it. And so am I. For these socks, I used uh, the old Norwegian cast on for the first time in my life and I loved it because it makes the, the rib very elastic and it looks really neat. So I enjoyed learning it. And again, it's all about learning. Super exciting. Currently, I have only one project on my needles. It's a, a lacy kind of summery top. I will try to show it to you here. So this is how it will look like. Yeah, I think I will even finish it today because it's such a joy to make and I'm following a free YouTube tutorial in Russian and I'm very happy with it. I'm using very soft uh, yarn, which is a mix of cotton and acrylic. It's made in Turkey and it's the first time in my life when I'm uh, knitting lacy elements. 
I was so afraid of um, lace, any type of uh, like yarn, yarn patterns, like motifs before, like knitted mo motifs, but I'm really enjoying it. It's not that difficult at all. And now I want maybe to create some more things of this type. I started this top only four days ago when I had a terrible migraine and usually my migraines last for two or three days and no pills help. I cannot lay down, I cannot sleep, I cannot work, I cannot like, uh, you know, perceive any type of information, but I need to do something with my hands just to distract my mind from, from the pain. And I just knitted, so it's my <laughs> migraine top. Of course, I don't want to name it like migraine. I don't want this kind of memory, but this is the story. It was, it just saved me from being more miserable. So, and I think it's mission accomplished, <laughs> knitting mission accomplished. Initially, I bought this yarn for completely different top, which was supposed to be a crochet top. And I even crocheted quite a bit of it. I will show you. Yeah, it was supposed to be like this, like with, with buttons. It would be buttons. But I fell out of love with it. I think I will unravel it in the end. I'm not doing it right now because I still have enough yarn left for finishing my knit top. But it just happens, you know, you just cannot explain why you don't like the pattern anymore, why you're not thrilled with the uh, yarn project idea anymore. And I don't want to continue to finish something that I'm not happy with. So I think I will just frog it. And it's fine. I also found two tops that sort of rhyme with this lacy top. One is Rigmore Tea by Petit Knit, and another one is a free pattern by Drops Design, and it's called Kenyan Spice Top. I will leave all the links in the description section. And I think I would love to knit the Petit Knits design, maybe for the next cold season, maybe I would make it in some kind of fluffy mohair yarn variant. I don't know yet, but I enjoyed just looking at them and just lace is such a spring thing. I've been crocheting a lot of colors uh, recently because Brian and I have finally taken a decision to give Handmade Market a try. Because uh, we already have even an idea what our table, our stall, how do you say it, like our Handmaker place will look like, as we have been to a Handmade Market that was held just in our neighborhood maybe a couple of weeks ago, and the next one will be held in the downtown of Belgrade in May. Brian has already texted the organizers and will send the application next week, and hopefully it will be accepted. The participation fee is very, very affordable, and it would be just an amazing thing to do, because I think I will... I want to fulfill this kind of bucket list dream of mine, and it's not about just earning money or something, it's about getting the experience. And I'm just so excited about crafting, about everything handmade and about the whole atmosphere of that place. And I will include the footage that we managed to make at that handmade market later in the video so that you can see it. And I really loved it. As a visitor, it was fantastic.
So uh, just to get ready for the market, I was using, I was crocheting some items using the yarn that I already have. It's a very high quality cotton yarn from a German, or not a German, a Greek brand that I don't remember. And I crocheted more colors because this is this is my thing. That I, that's what I love and like uh, making. And um, this is one of the finished ones that I already uh, decorated with beads. I embroidered with beads, natural gemstone beads. I will show it to you. It's kind of a beautiful off-white color and the beads are, uh, it's called a mezzanite, mezzanite. I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce it in the right way. Yeah, this is it. I'm not sure it will look good. <laughs> yeah, so I have more colors, more ready colors that I just need to embroider. And I have uh, three types of quartz beads right now. I have uh, transparent quartz, rose quartz and white quartz. Yeah, uh, I just love the feel and the combination. And of course, uh, if you're interested, I will keep you updated with all the handmade market experience because, for example, I personally love videos like this. Uh, I love hearing about the experiences of other crafters and their journeys in all directions. And I don't know, I'm just, I just get so excited to try new things. And also as a fun small project, I crocheted some flowers that can be used as bookmarks. Here are some. I will show you. Oh, yeah, here. And the beige ones. Yeah, they are super cute and I'm keeping one for myself. I'm, al I'm already using it, so it's just somewhere there. <laughs> but yeah, it would be, I just thought it would be a great and cute addition to our stall and the hand market. I have no idea whether my plans will come to life or not. I'm just excited to make them and to kind of get ready for the hot, warm season. And this is what I'm going to make for my me made wardrobe. One yarn project that I intend to make is another crochet vest like this one, but only uh, slightly modified and made in summer variant. I will use the leftover yarn that I have. Uh, it's I will have some leftover of this brown yarn. I have some leftover yarn that I used for making my pillowcase. And I think I will buy maybe a couple uh, balls of um, maybe a rose colored and something else more light colored yarn to create just a lovely palette and it the vest will be slightly more um, wide it will be slightly more cropped and 
I just I just cannot have enough of the of the vests. I think I just discovered how versatile, how functional and how fun they are to combine with all other items in my wardrobe. As for sewing plans, I'm pretty ambitious here. First, I want to sew a pocket skirt. It's a free pattern from Peppermint magazine. Again, all the links will be down in the description section. I think it looks so fun and versatile and beautiful. I haven't decided which kind of fabric I will use. I will just see what is available here. I'm thinking of either linen or... I forgot the name. It's also a plant fabric. Uh, it's called Rami. Rami, I think. I, I saw like in one shop in the downtown of Belgrade, they have a really nice looking palette of uh, Rami fabric, fabric. Yeah, that would be great. At the moment, I don't have any skirts in my wardrobe, but I've been wanting one a lot. I was even thinking of turning my navy dress into a skirt, but I actually love navy dress and I'm thinking of kind of altering it a bit because I'm tired of the, that color. So maybe I will see uh, what, what can be done. But yeah, I, I'm excited to add a skirt because for summer it would be just a breezy amazing. Then from the same Peppermint magazine, I want to make a wrap top. Again, I haven't decided which type of fabric I will use. Maybe it will be linen or maybe it will be double gauze. I think I will go with double gauze. I just have to find a nice color. And like uh, gauze, this double gauze uh, fabric is more drapey and I just love the feel of it. It's very comfy, it's very soft. Right now I have one pair of double gauze um, pajama shorts that I made one year and a half ago when I was still living in my Siberia and I just love them. I wear them all the time and they are kind of falling apart now and I think I need to make uh, a new pair of shorts for me that would be the next project, sewing project for this spring. Of course, I may occasionally change my plans or add something or just exclude something. It's just a matter of inspiration. But at the moment, these are the things that I really want to make. And please feel free to share in the comments what are your plans for your spring and summer projects. And feel free to sh share, maybe to send me some photos of your creations to the email that will be mentioned down below. Just as those amazing crafters and subscribers did. Yelena. Yelena is a fellow Siberian crafter and this fact is so heartwarming for me. Look at these very atmospheric, beautiful items. I'm so impressed by Yelena's talent and unique style, and I just adore the use of vintage buttons. Elizabeth. This is such a touching and inspiring story behind an absolutely stunning creation. This is what makes handmaking and crafts so essential for us humans. Stories, lives, loves, beautiful ideas encapsulated in one piece. It's gorgeous, and I feel honored to share this. Thank you, dear Yelena and Elizabeth, for inspiring us. And this is it for today. Thank you so much for watching this video till the end, my friends. And as always, I encourage you to never stop creating, no matter what. I'm sending you much love. Пока-пока.